fire up that easy bake oven because we're partying like it's 1994. Lunchables and Trix yogurt for everybody. So Fear Street 1994 tells the story of a town haunted by a witch's curse and the slashings keep on coming. What's up everybody, welcome to the first part of a trilogy of reviews. Fear Street 1994 debuted on Netflix today and it is the first of a three part movie series that's going to be playing all throughout July. It's based off a series of horror books by R.L. Stein. yes the Goosebumps guy, but this series actually predates Goosebumps starting in 1989. So it's going to be 1994 for the first chapter, then we're going to I believe 1987 for the second chapter, and then rounding it out in 1966 with the third chapter. And we're gonna get this whole trilogy of movies based off of this witch's curse. So is this something that should have your attention? Is this something that's gonna make July stand out as a very cool horror month for Netflix? Is it gonna feel like goosebumps or does this have more of an adult edge to it? Let's talk about Fear Street 1994. So the positives right off the bat is that this does find a fun balance of definitely having that Goosebumps flavor, even though you know, it's not the people that made the show, so it's not exactly the same visual style. It has that same kind of flavor, that same writing style, that same kind of edge to it that those books always had. But this is certainly R-rated. This is certainly something that is made more for adults, although a lot of you kids are gonna be watching this, aren't you? That's right, you're awesome. It has kind of that classic 90s horror, almost TV show type aesthetic to the characters and the character dynamics and to some of the, uh, the acting choices given, but it also has blood and gore and kills. So very strange balance, you know, very similar to whenever we had scary stories to tell in the dark come out a couple of years ago and it felt like it had this weird thing where I didn't quite know who it was marketed to. This is kind of in the same sense, but given that it's right to Netflix, I feel like for some reason it, it feels a little bit more palatable here. It feels like I can watch this and the nostalgic part of me can get into some of the goofy humor, some of the goofy character dynamic here, but the gore hound in me is like, hey, that chick's head just got split into like nine parts. Sweet. I also like the story here. It starts off very standard. Uh, I would almost say that the opening of this very much mimics Scream in a way to where it feels like it is going for that quintessential 90s slasher vibe. I mean, Scream owned the 90s. And then quickly it starts to get into this curse and there's a little bit more supernatural stuff going on and that was a nice little twist that I wasn't expecting. Like I've never read the novels. I don't have any pre-established expectations walking into this. I literally click play without watching the trailers, without even reading the synopsis. And I was surprised in the first half an hour how this kind of twisted my expectations on its head. Also I have to give huge props to this uh, movie so far for having an awesome soundtrack. Now if, if the 1987 chapter is going to be as awesome awesome in the soundtrack department as 1994 was, I'm probably going to be in love with this series just even without watching it. I can just close my eyes and be like, hell yeah, four stars. I love the fact that whenever you get something that's kind of a period piece like this, that's going back to try to capture a certain era, the soundtrack is the easiest and probably the most important way to do that. And every time a song came on, I was just like, and finally, I actually liked the way that this movie wrapped up. I was kind of worried. I was like, is this going to feel like just an episode of a TV show? Is it not going to resolve anything and it's just going to carry us on? This should have been just a, a long mini series split into three movies. But it actually does feel like one cohesive story in an hour and 40 minutes. I mean, even if we didn't get chapter two and chapter three for a year or so, I feel like it wraps up in a satisfying way while leaving some things hanging to where you feel like you've gotten your complete story, you've gotten your resolution, but there's also some things left hanging in the balance that you really look forward to seeing that getting resolved in a future chapter. Moving on to the mixed, I gotta say the characters I'm pretty mixed on in this first chapter. Uh, there were some of them that were entertaining and some of them that I really enjoyed. There was others that I didn't really identify with too much and I didn't really, uh, I didn't really get onto their side, aside from not wanting them to get slashed up by a random supernatural slasher guy. And I think part of that is because a lot of the characters in here are very much caricatures. I mean, you have the, the nerdy, quiet kid that knows everything about the curse of the town, all the way down to the dates and the names. You've got the, the off the wrong side of the tracks kids that come in that are dealing drugs, but they're kind of like the cool, funny ones that you want to hang out with, even though they're not 
necessarily the best people in the world. And then you get the others that are just kind of like the, the tough girl, the sheltered girl, and it just feels like characters that I've seen before. There was nothing about any of the characters where I went, oh, that's an interesting new dynamic to have in here. Hey, you know, even though we're going back in time, I kind of wish I could spend more time with that character. I I'm fine. If this is all we get until this kind of wraps itself up in the third chapter and I assume we'll see these characters again, I'm okay with them being in one movie, they're okay. Now moving on to the negatives. Now, while I was saying that this has a nice balance of kind of being for adults, but also having a little bit of that 90s goosebumps kind of kid aesthetic to it, and a little bit of those vibes. And I think that, you know, as long as you're not somebody that doesn't want your kid to see gore whatsoever, I think that this can appeal to both without being too scary for the kids or too stupid for the adults. But where this falls out of that is that there, there's certain segments in this that just is completely unbelievable. If you're trying to be serious enough where you're having gore and you're having kills and there's actual stakes to the movie, it seems a little bit ridiculous that you have a school bus and a car coming and they had this little battle where they're throwing shit out of the school bus and the school bus driver never slams on the brakes once or asks what the fuck's going on. It's just kids are allowed to do whatever the hell they want in this movie. There's just weird little segments like that where I was just kind of like, a little more realism, please. Just, just a tad more. Another thing that bothered me, even though I really praised the soundtrack, that side of things, they did awesome, they did perfect, totally appealed to me as a metalhead. Uh, I did not feel the 90s nostalgia here. I did not feel like beyond the soundtrack, they really did a whole lot of effort to really capture the 90s as an era. I mean, we see the 80s captured awesomely all the time. There's always Millennium Falcons and Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, you watch something like Stranger Things and it just oozes 80s nostalgia and they do a lot of effort in putting all these little Easter eggs out there for 80s kids to just warm their hearts. Well, I'm a 90s kid and I didn't see anything in this that made me feel like the 90s. Even some of the dialogue and some of the characters felt like modern kids that were just acting like they were in the 90s. I mean, there's a quick little flash of a guy playing like a SNES game or something like that, but that's really about all you get here. I mean, you could have thrown some food in there, some TV shows or something to make it really feel like the 90s, and that would have made me fall in love with this thing that much more. But I felt like they didn't capture that very much. And my final negative is with some of the humor dialogue, some of the dialogue that's meant to make you laugh, that's meant to lighten things up a little bit. None of it really made me laugh, and some of it was actually kind of cringy. Uh, there was a joke about Pound Town that I kind of just rolled my eyes and was like, please just get to the third act. Uh, it, it wasn't horrible. It wasn't embarrassing. Again, they're trying to appeal to both here, but, it, but it's... For me as an adult, I can't put on the, the kid gloves and watch this and be like, okay, I forgive the corny dialogue. It just, just like the unrealistic scenes, it just feels out of place when you have people getting sawed in half and, and people getting axes in their face. It's just a little too adult for that type of humor. You know, step it up a little bit. But overall, guys, I really enjoyed this. I think this is a really good straight to VOD type movie. Uh, I think that a lot of people are going to really enjoy it. I think people that grew up on Goosebumps are really going to appreciate that R.L. Stein aesthetic that's coming back. I think people that like slasher movies are gonna like some of the throwback vibes and some of the very direct and indirect homages. They just struggled a little bit with making this fully for me. And I don't know who this specifically is for. I think it does a good job of appealing for everybody in a big age range but uh, just it could have been a little bit better in my opinion. We'll see what the other two have in store for us. So if you're a fan of R.L. Stein or you just want a good throwback slasher movie to check out right now, well, you got three of them to check out, but you can only check out this first one right now. So please check this out on Netflix if you're a fan of the genre and you will have a good time with it. Just temper your expectations with some of the dialogue and some of the, uh, the realism in the situations and you will have a good time streaming it. So what do you guys think of Fear Street 1994? Are you a fan of the novels? Did this do a good job at representing the novels? Are you just an R.L. RL Stein fanatic and this is an absolute love letter to you? Or are you completely devoid of Goosebumps nostalgia and you watched this and thought that it was terrible? Let me know all of your thoughts down below on Fear Street 1994 and are you looking forward to the next two chapters? Please like and share this video and hit that subscribe button so you can check out my review for the next two parts. I already have access to part two so you'll get that review a little bit early and I'm sure I'll get access to part three as well a little bit early, so definitely hit the subscribe button so you don't miss that. Thank you guys as always for watching, and remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.